Hi, I'm Peg Steffen. I'm a former classroom teacher and a manager at NASA and then NOAA for many years. And I retired and now I'm working part-time for the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy. But I wanted to share with you today an activity from the GPS STEM curriculum on trilateration. And before we get started and I share my screen that show you the website, I wanted to show you this chart that I had blown up and printed at a local print shop um, this is an 18 by 24, it's about uh, $1.28, but you'll notice it has four spots here, A, B, C, and D, which indicate the relative positions of four GPS satellites. And this is the piece of technology that you will need to do this activity with your students. The uh, website has this map on it in a PDF form, and you can just send that to a local print shop and get whatever size you can afford. I'm gonna share my screen with you and show you some, some slides that will give you the website. Here is the GPS STEM website. There are 12 activities on this that uh, you can choose from. It would probably be best to use it with middle school and high school students. Um, certainly um, the technology of GPS is around us all the time. So the first thing I usually ask students or teachers if we're doing a workshop is to try the GPS functions on the phone. And there's several that are available. Google Map will work if you send it, send to it your location. It will send you the lat long. Uh, you can use a compass or you can also use my GPS coordinates. It's an app that you can put on your uh, phone and it will give you the GPS coordinates. Um, and I usually ask students to write down their Latin long and see if they can, you know, tell where they are. If you apps have a GPS receiver, like a Garmin handheld receiver um, or a receiver that you would have in your car, uh, you can point students to that as well in terms of um, GPS functions. And they can also look up lat latitude and longitude. If the students are not very well versed in latitude and longitude, this is a good time as well to reintroduce them to the basic coordinates that we use to find uh, places on the, wor on the world. So the idea is that we're wanting the students to understand that GPS or global positioning um, is a function of satellite technology. And the receivers in this case is a handheld receiver, but there's a receivers in trucks and cars, and you can also uh, get GPS coordinates from some phones. Many phones don't actually talk to the satellites, they talk to cell towers, um, but you can look into your individual cell phone to find out functions of your particular piece of technology. But regardless, we're using um, GPS satellites to simulate um, a, a trilateration activity. Now, this is just a, a very simple graphic uh, that can be found on the website that shows the wide array of GPS satellites that are around the world at any one time, and you need three or four to find your position on any spot on the world. You need three to find a place on the flat earth, and you need four to find your altitude. So this whole series of GPS STEM activities is intended to be used with students and it does not require a lot of equipment. Most of the materials are very low cost or no cost. They include stories, links to videos, presentation materials, and a lot of career information. Um, the idea for this was to find real world applications of GPS and GIS. And so you'll see things like orbital space clutter, energy grids, precision agriculture, for example, where to put water at a certain point in your field to get the best yield, um, global supply chains, aviation, weather forecasting, and even conservation. So the lessons were written with the idea of inquiry, discovery, explanation, and application. And many of them use real-time and archive data. Um, a lot of them use online sim simulations and modeling. Um, and these are the lessons that you will find in the curriculum in Earth, Space, Life, and Movement. Uh, there's three lessons in each of those themes. And the one I'm going to talk about today are, is the first one, Are We There Yet? Mapping it out with latitude and longitude. And I'm on my way, Navigation and Global Positioning System. 
So let's get started. We're going to try to find Sadie, and Sadie is a lost puppy, and Sadie happens to have a GPS receiver on her. So uh, students then are given that large map that I showed you, and it's important to point out to them the difference between tri triangulation and trilateration. Triangulation is what you would use, the trigonometry, for example, that you would use to find the height of a tree, or if you wanted to knock down your neighbor's castle walls, where you should put the cannonball, okay? That's triangulation. Uh, trilateration is a slightly different, and in this case, we're going to be using three sat uh, four satellites and the time that it takes for a receiver to get a signal from those satellites. And so I've provided here four different times for the signals that are coming from satellites A, B, C, and D. And so this is the time it takes from the satellite to Sadie. So what do we do with this? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, we've got to calculate the distance, and that is the relationship between the distance traveled and the rate, which is the speed of light, and the amount of time spent traveling. So in this case, the distance between that satellite and Sadie is the rate, which is the speed of light, times the time, and that time was given to you in seconds. So you multiply those two together, but we're looking at a, a map scale here that is not real life. So the map scale on this particular map is 1 to 21,838,839. And in order to convert the number that you're getting to be the same as on your map, you divide the distance to the satellite, whatever you got, for the distance uh, by that, that map scale, and the answer then will be in meters. So you multiply that by 100 to get centimeters, and that's the number that you will use on your map, the paper map that you have printed out for the students. So in this case, you would give the students a, a sheet that looks something like this. What was their distance to satellite A in meters, and then what would it be then converted, converted to centimeters? Um, and that's why this, this whole um, mathematics exercise is one of the reasons why I would stick to middle school and high school, unless you want to give them the answers. And then if you want to give them the answers, this is what you would find. So the answers, if you wanted to do this with younger students and not deal with all of the mathematics, you can just give them the distances to satellite A, B, C, and D. I would have the students do this in small groups. Each person in the group would get a different satellite and they would measure out a piece of string and then they would start their piece of string at satellite A, B, C, or D and then find out that where they intersect. So you would make an arc on the map and when the map, the, the arcs are done, you will find that uh, Sadie is actually in uh, Springfield, Illinois. So you can change those numbers any way you like to find, to have uh, Sadie be found other places. I just did this because I was doing a workshop in Illinois. And, um, but it's a pretty straightforward mathematics. It's pretty straightforward uh, learning about map scales and learning about the signals that come from GPS satellites and that we can find someone or something, or in this case, Sadie, uh, using those GPS coordinates. Uh, this activity uh, also, marries well with this tracking marine mammals activity that is in the GPS STEM curriculum. And in this case, you'll see on the seal on the right has a tracking device uh, that has been glued to its skin. Um, it drops off after a while, so it's fairly innocuous. Um, but in this case, the students are given uh, five animals to investigate and they need to find out about these five different marine mammals. And once they find out about these marine mammals, they're finding out about their, their habits, their migration uh, patterns, uh, their seasonal movements, and then they are given a series of uh, GPS coordinates and they map it out on a, on a map that's given to you or given to the students. And this is the ending result of the map that the students would use. So they would tell the, get the coordinates and indicate in this case, the movement of this marine mammal over a year's time and in fact, it ends up being the elephant seal, the northern elephant seal. And the students can uh, 
you know, collect their evidence and explain why they think their, their pattern is what animal. And, um, and it's pretty obvious about by the when and where this animal spends time uh, during the year. And they can pretty quickly find out that this is in fact a pattern for the Northern elephant seal. So I hope you'll, uh, you'll take a look at this uh, series of lessons. I think there's something in there for, for people from all over the country. And there are a few other links here as well that I hope you will check into because I think that students need to know a little bit about the technology that they use every day. And I hope you will contact me. I'm at uh, pstefan at imsa.edu uh, if you have additional questions or you have some other queries. And thank you very much for your time.